Hey there, and welcome to DIY Projects with Pete. In today's episode, we'll be building some closet shelving. Now this is a fun project and it's super easy to modify the plans to best fit your closet space. Now, if you enjoy the video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. And let's get started with today's project. I started by cleaning out the closet that was full of outdoor gear and camping supplies that really hadn't been organized yet from the move to this new house. Now the closet's eight feet wide with eight foot ceilings. So I drew up a sketch and then came up with a plan. Now the plans are available at diypeat.com forward slash closet shelving and you can modify the dimensions to best fit your closet space. I picked up four sheets of three quarter inch thick plywood and a few additional pine boards for this project. I threw them on the rolling workbench and then got ready to make some cuts. Full sheets of plywood can be a little hard to maneuver and to work with if a second person isn't around. So I made most of the initial cuts using a circular saw mounted to a saw guide, which comes in really handy for projects like this. Just take your time to make sure you get a nice straight and even cut. I made the unit and shelves 15 and 3 quarter inches in depth, which is plenty deep for all sorts of clothing and storage. This build can be completed without a table saw, but if you have one, you'll be able to speed up the process for some of the additional cuts. I actually prefer using a table saw once the plywood's a bit more manageable in size, but you don't have to have one. The plans have diagrams showing the most efficient ways to make your cuts, and you can find them in the link in the description below. It never hurts to double check your measurements with a tape and a speed square to ensure everything will go together like it should. Once your cuts are complete, we'll begin assembling the first of two outer units. We'll basically make a four-sided plywood box. Now I'm using a pocket hole jig to connect each of the boards. And the big benefit of this is that you won't see a bunch of screw holes and that it creates a quick and instant connection at each corner once you add the screws. So set the jig and bit for three quarter inch stock and then begin drilling the holes. Next, bring the boards together and use a clamp to secure the boards to each other while you insert the one and a quarter inch long pocket hole screws. Now, I sometimes don't use wood glue for demonstration purposes, uh, just in case I make a mistake or I wanna change up the design, but a combination of wood glue and screws can certainly be used. Now, if you don't have a pocket hole jig, you can pre-drill and attach using normal wood screws, so don't feel like you have to have the jig to be able to build this project. However, I will tell you the Craig Jig is one of my favorite tools in the shop and it's been well worth the investment. I have the Craig Jig K5. The K4 works great as well and is a bit cheaper option though. You can find the link in the description below. Next, we'll cut the one x four boards down to size on a miter saw and then move on to the jig for a few holes. Simply insert the board into the jig, drill the holes and then rotate the board to its other end. Next, I added a few pocket holes along the horizontal side to tie it into the top and bottom of the boxes. These support boards will strengthen and square up everything. They'll also be what we drill through to connect the units to the wall during the installation. I'd recommend using a clamp to hold the board in place while inserting the screws to ensure all the boards are as flush as possible when going together. And you'll want to build two of these outer units. Next, we'll move on to the center unit. Now it goes together fairly similar to the two outer sections, but it's only going to be used for hanging clothing. After drilling the holes, attach the top of the center unit. The lower board will then be placed about six inches in from the other end. Now this is going to give us space for a lower rod, so you'll be able to hang additional clothing between the rod and the ground once the unit is hung. Then double check that everything's nice and square. I cut three support boards for the center unit using a miter saw and then attach the top and lower boards first. Work your way around and insert screws into each hole and then finally attach the middle board about halfway up in the unit. The next step was to make shelf pin holes for the adjustable shelves in each outer unit. I clamped a scrap board that was three and a half inches tall to the lower corner to set the jig off the bottom a little bit since I wouldn't need a shelf that low. Then I put the shelf pin hole jig against the front of the unit and drilled just the top hole. Now the jig comes with a pin that will keep the holes in line as you continue to move up in height. It's a bit like playing leapfrog as the pin will continue to move its way up after drilling each segment of holes. This process is a little repetitive, but it does go by pretty quickly. 
You'll want to drill holes on all four corners of the outside units and then make sure to use a block at each corner to make sure the holes are all level with each other so that you have straight shelves. Now if you don't have a shelf pin jig, you can attach each shelf permanently using screws. I decided to add a permanent shelf in the center of each outer unit to square up the overall box since the plywood had a slight bow to it. I attached the middle shelf at each end using pocket holes and screws and then I added a support board beneath that ties into the shelf and that will be able to drill through to secure the unit to the wall. I decided to add trim around the front of each unit to dress it up a bit. I had a few scrap boards around the shop that I ripped down to one and a half inches in width on the table saw but you could simply buy boards already cut to that size. The next step was to cut the trim boards to the correct length on a miter saw and then to attach the trim. I ran a bead of glue around the front of the plywood before laying down each trim board and then I used an air nailer with 18 gauge nails to attach the trim. Now this process goes by really quickly and as always you could use a hammer and nails if an air nailer isn't in your toolbox yet. The trim went around all four sides of both outer units and of the center unit and it overhangs to the inside and is flush with the outside of the plywood. I bought an 8 foot long nickel rod and cut it down to make two rods. A cutoff blade or a hacksaw will make quick work of this. Edge banding was used to cover the front of each shelf. You'll want to cut the banding slightly longer than the shelf and then use an iron to go over the banding. Now this is going to heat up the glue and it's going to stick it to the face of the plywood. It takes a little practice but you'll figure it out pretty quickly. Let the banding cool down after it's applied and then use a sharp razor blade to trim off the excess banding. You can follow up with a light sanding if needed. Next I did a quick sanding over the surfaces to smooth things out and remove any rough edges. 220 grit sandpaper on an orbital sander works really well for this process. I determined the best placement for the rod mounting hardware. The top rod will be close to the ceiling when the units are mounted to the wall, so make sure you'll be able to reach the rod with a hanger once it is mounted. Around four to six inches from the top should work well and mount it in about four and a half inches from the front. The mounting hardware came with one inch long screws and so I bought a small pack of five eighths inch long screws so they wouldn't go all the way through the plywood. Plastic was laid out to protect the garage floor once I started to add a stain to the wood and before staining I removed the hardware, vacuumed any remaining sawdust and wiped down the surfaces with a damp cloth. Before staining, I always recommend trying it on a test surface to make sure you like it. I found a carbon gray stain at the store that I wanted to try. I also thought about leaving it light and just doing a clear poly, but in the end I decided the carbon gray would look nice and so I started to apply it. Wear rubber gloves and a respirator or make sure you're in a well ventilated area while applying the stain. I used a microfiber rag to apply it and a cheap paintbrush to get the stain in the hard to reach areas and corners. The stain goes on fairly thick, but you'll still be able to see the wood grain a bit. I'd recommend doing two coats of stain. Once finished, go ahead and let the stain dry and air out before moving it into your home and then reattach the hardware as well. While it was drying, I took a break and went outside to work on my backyard hockey rink project. Here's a look at the progress so far. I basically had a six foot difference from one end to the other, so I rented an excavator and then my buddy Josh came over with his bobcat to help level the rink, which is going to be 50 feet wide by 100 feet long. It's been a lot of fun and a learning experience so far, but if you've ever built a rink and have any tips for me, please share in the comments below. The next day, I started the installation process. First, I found the studs in the wall that we'll attach the shelving to. Use a stud finder and then mark each stud. I like to use a laser level to help make quick work of marking things out and then a stud buddy to double check that the stud finder is accurate. A stud buddy is basically a magnet that will find the screws in the wall that attached your drywall to the stud and it's pretty handy to have. I moved the shelving into the house and put the outer units in the closet first. 
It's helpful to have a second person to lift the shelves, but it can be done with just one person. I lifted the center unit to the ceiling and then used a drill to insert three inch long wood screws through the support board and into the stud in the wall. Have the tools handy to determine that it is hung level. Next, I raised the right unit into place and attached it to the wall using the same process. Then I put the left unit up and in place. I used jack clamps to raise the shelving, which is like having a second set of hands. I use them all the time when installing cabinets, and I also use them for so many different projects and purposes around the shop. My friends Lowell and Brian got me set up with jack clamps about five years ago, and I recently got to take a tour of their manufacturing facility. It was really neat to see how their clamps are made right here in my hometown of Bozeman, Montana. In fact, I'm going to be giving away a set of jack clamps to a lucky DIYer who comments below in the first week of this video being released on why they'd like a set of jack clamps. So leave a comment and let us know. After attaching each unit to the wall, I used a couple nuts and bolts to connect the center unit to each outside unit. Now this isn't 100% necessary, but it does pull them together nice and snug. Lastly, insert the rails in place and start loading up your new closet organization system. Put your adjustable shelves in and enjoy what you just built. All right, thanks so much for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed today's project and that it inspires you to go out and build something. If you did like the video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. Don't forget to check out some of the other videos on the channel. And thanks again for watching. Cheers from Montana. Five Zero Hotel, contact Minneapolis Center, 124.25.